As you've just seen, the United Nations bodies are mobilizing to make up for the lack of information on uh, the impact of the current crisis on living conditions of the poorest and most vulnerable. The World System for Global Impact and Vulnerability Alert will rely on existing data and newly obtained information on a real-time basis and is in keeping with your wish to be better informed of ways in which the world crisis is affecting those least equipped to deal with it. Later on in the morning, the Secretary General will be providing us with more information on this. On behalf of the Council and our distinguished guests, I'd like to thank the Secretary General for having given us the first view of this situation, which is a concrete input for our work. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished ministers, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor of declaring open the substantive session of 2009 of the Economic and Social Council in the 8th meeting of this session. I extend a very warm welcome to all the participants, and I'm convinced that this session that has just begun will be as interesting as it will be productive. First of all, I would invite members of the Council to consider agenda item A of the provisional agenda of the substantive session of 2009, entitled Adoption of the Agenda and Other Organizational Matters. This is in Section 1 of E-2009, 100 stroke 1 and its current agenda. Are there any comments on the provisional agenda. May I take it that the Council intends to adopt the tentative agenda for the 2009 substantive session as in Section A of Document E, 2009-100 and its current If there are no objections, it is so decided. Under this agenda item, one, we have document L8 containing the draft program of work for the 2009 substantive session and document E stroke 2009 L9 presenting the status of documentation for the session. An update of the status of documentation for the session is to be found in document E stroke 2009 CRP1, which is available in English only. May I take it that the Council intends to adopt the draft program of work, bearing in mind uh, that the debate on uh, this agenda item will remain open throughout the substantive session, and should this be necessary, uh, changes or modifications can be made to the program of work as uh, the session proceeds. In the absence of objections, it is so decided. If I may, I would point out that uh, the files before you contain a more detailed version of uh, the program of work and the, for the high level segment. There will be detailed information on this on the website of the Economic and Social Council, un.org stroke ECOSOC. May I now draw your attention to document E stroke 2009 CRP2, which contains the list of non-governmental organizations that have requested to be heard by the Council. This 2009 session, the committee responsible for NGOs has decided to recommend to the Council to hear the organizations whose names are listed in document E-2009 uh, CRP2 under item 2B, annual ministerial review, uh, the high-level segment. May I take it that the Council intends to adopt the recommendation of the non-governmental organizations committed to be found in document E-2009 CRP2? If there are no objections, it is so decided. May I now invite the Council's attention to Agenda Item 2, entitled High Level Segment. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished ministers, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, since the beginning of the year, we've been working together 
so as to highlight the challenges posed uh, to the world community today in the field of development and in particular as regards public health. The world is currently undergoing the most serious economic and financial crisis since the Great Depression and we're very much aware that the impetus towards realizing development priority will be difficult to maintain and this is particularly so for the Millennium Development Goals that relate to public health. Only too often in the past, we've seen that it was social policies that suffered the most in crises and that the poorest and most vulnerable were the most affected. The themes for the annual ministerial review, implementation and uh, commitments in regard to global public health is therefore particularly relevant. With a view to holding an informed debate, one that's as concrete as possible during this session, we have organized a broad preparatory process dealing with the main aspects of the health and development issues. I would refer, first of all, to the role of partnerships and innovative measures, the input of innovative financial resources and the action of a number of stakeholders have opened the door to the emergence of structures, networks, alliances and totally new partnerships that depart from traditional public health and development models. A special meeting on the question of philanthropy and public health in the world took place last February to highlight the role of philanthropy in uh, the area of health. In particular, it considered the critical input of philanthropy in dealing with maternal health issues, reduction of infant mortality, and in the eradication of neglected tropical diseases, as well as in setting up innovative means for financing care and reducing the worldwide burden in dealing with these illnesses. Another specialized meeting this year, at our specialized meeting this year, we assessed the often unknown role of traditional medicine in dealing with public health issues. In order to prepare the ministerial meeting, various regional ministerial meetings were organized over the past few months, and this made it possible to discuss various public health issues from a regional perspective. The first such meeting at the regional level took place in Sri Lanka and it dealt with financing strategies for health care. Another meeting took place in China on ways of promoting health education. The government of Qatar was the meeting on dealing with non transmissible diseases, non communicable diseases and trauma. The ministers of Latin America and the Caribbean met in Jamaica and considered the theme of the relationship between HIV and development, uh, the regional meeting for Africa, which took place in mid-June in Accra, dealt with online health and information and uh, communication technologies for public health, e-health. I wouldn't like to look ahead to the various presentations you'll be hearing on this subject, but I would like to put forward some important messages that I've gleaned from these various consultations. First of all, the governments must take the lead in setting up effective health care systems. Their efforts, however, must be supplemented by those of other stakeholders, local communities, civil society organizations, philanthropists, the private sector, international organizations, needless to say, and international cooperation acting in line are all crucial actors for better, for more equitable health outcomes acting in line with national systems and priorities. Investments of a more sustained nature are needed to support the health agenda. This includes a fair system of health financing, well-trained and adequately remunerated human workforce, as well as a system of governance of the sector that ensures equity, participation, and the best possible use of resources. Thirdly, the growing challenge of non-communicable diseases needs to be given a high priority. 
these diseases, together with injuries, cause today some 60% of deaths globally. Cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, and chronic respiratory diseases are shaving the health budgets, not only in developed countries. Fourthly, relatively modest investment in the fight against neglected tropical diseases would have an enormous effect and take a heavy burden off the shoulders of the most vulnerable, especially in developing countries. Fifth, the commitments made to combat communicable diseases must be honored. While progress has been made in dealing with HIV, AIDS, TB and malaria, there is continued need for vigorous action. The synergies between AIDS response and strengthening of health and social systems should be further maximized. We should in particular aim at eliminating mother to child transmission of HIV by the year 2015. The information and communications technology revolution offers tremendous potential for significant health outcomes if rooted in a comprehensive national development strategy and health program. Information communication technologies can, in particular, prove a very effective way of making health care accessible through e-health. Finally, multilateral approaches and international cooperation have the greatest potential for success. This has again been made absolutely clear with the emergence of new and unforeseen health threats and epidemics such as the H1N1 flu. Viruses know no borders and neither should we in promoting the health agenda. While these global and regional meetings organized in preparation of the annual ministerial review have offered broader perspectives, the national voluntary presentations we will hear over the next two days provide an opportunity to focus on national programs and success stories or unique challenges that a country is facing in achieving the Millennium Development Goals. I would like to thank the representatives of Bolivia, China, Jamaica, Japan, Mali, Sri Lanka, and Sudan for having taken the initiative of sharing their experiences with us. I'd also like to salute the Secretary General for his initiative in convening a global health forum on advancing global health in the face of the crisis early last month in New York, where some of the issues before us were also discussed. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, real and measurable measurable progress has been made in health outcomes, such as in the areas of HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, and in reduction of child deaths. Serious gaps remain, however. Progress in maternal health is, for instance, negligible. This also impinges on the health of the newborn child. Increased Political will and commitment is therefore urgently required to eliminate the unacceptably high global rate of preventable maternal mortality and morbidity and ensure the full and effective implementation of our human rights obligations in this field. The interlinkages between health and other elements of the United Nations Development Agenda can also not be ignored. Thus, good health will not be possible without clean water and sanitation. In the same vein, climate change and environmental degradation are going to have negative impacts on our health goals if urgent action is not taken, to name just a few examples. In order surely to address the challenges of health, we have to address pervading inequities in uh, public health among and within countries. Most of the differences are attributable to the conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. Underlying problems of gender inequality are a crucial part of these inequities. 
reflected in the great differences in the health of women and girls who are often lagging behind men and boys. We must also address the impact of the social determinants of health and establish effective social protection systems in order to ensure universal access to health care. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Honorable Ministers, Excellence, Ladies and Gentlemen, managing the risks and rewards of health and development is increasingly a critical challenge facing all stakeholders. The Economic and Social Council offers a unique opportunity to maximize multi-stakeholder participation in promoting collaborative action on the global health agenda. Accomplishing the health goals remains a daunting task. Improving health outcomes is linked not only to the provision of health services and access thereto, but also to the active involvement of decision makers in all sectors, education, agriculture, finance, or foreign affairs, to mention just a few. We have made some uh, progress in promoting a uh, whole of government approach, but strong follow through, firm resolve, and leadership are needed to keep the momentum. It is time now to help foster our common development objectives. It is time now to make this session and this council count. I thank you for your attention.